With less than 30 days to the 2023 general elections, the dire security situation across the country has continued to provoke apprehension about the possible subversion of the polls by criminal elements and their sponsors. The federal government must therefore assuage the concerns of Nigerians regarding security and public safety. Now, this is an important guarantee to hold a hitch-free election. Violence, we know, has amplified in many areas and it's an indication that the exercise may not hold in this crisis areas. This could lead to a constitutional crisis if pol uh, polling failed to hold in a significant percentage of constituencies. Instructively, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has consistently raised the red flag regarding the security situation and its consequences for our elections. On Tuesday, at least 27 people were killed following an airstrike, which hit some herders waiting for transport. Uh, to transport their cattle from an area that connects Benue State to Nasara, and the attack is said to be perpetrated by unknown forces. Well, joining us to discuss this tonight is Dr. Law Mefo. He is a forensic and social psychologist. And also joining us to discuss tonight is Upunabo Inko Tara. He's a civil rights advocate. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us, and good evening. Good evening, Miriam. Good evening, Nigerians. Good evening. Um, let, let me start with you, Oponabo, until we can get uh, Dr. Mefford to join us. Um, it's interesting that uh, all the reports and the responses we've gotten on this, I, I'd, I'd even like to let you know that this story was not a cover story on our national dailies. It was hidden somewhere in page six on the Vanguard newspaper, and I think on the punch. Um, and nobody has responded to what happened in Niger State. We've been able to extract some response from the police public relations officer in uh, Nasara State as to what happened in Nasara. And of course, the governor of Benue State also spoke uh, and pointed fingers as usual uh, to the government in power. But what bits me the most is how could an unknown aircraft be flying in Nigeria's airspace and not only flying, but was able to shoot down so many people and cost so much injury? Well, Marianne, um, I must say that this is the first time I'm even hearing this. I'm not seized of this fact, this information you're talking about. Um, probably because uh, it was not contemporized by the media and most likely as a result of, um, I think Nigerians are just in north to all these attacks, the concatenation of attacks going on in the country. And so I strongly believe that media practitioners wrongly do believe that uh, it's no longer news when you get such attacks and uh, such uh, uh, news will definitely not sell their paper. And so I think uh, for now, the in thing is politics and media practitioners are more interested in political news because they are there to also make money, not just to inform, educate and entertain. They have to sustain their, like Dr. Law just said, that uh, they're trying to fix his life. Uh, which means he's definitely trying to get diesel or something to power his generator. So these are the pledging issues that are affecting also the media organizations. So they just want to come up with news that will sell their papers so that uh, they have enough tech on it. I think that is why uh, most of the papers we are not really bothered about carrying that news. More so is more or less now, I want to then refer to it as a daily occurrence, probably uh, early occurrence in this country, you all, you all have all kinds of bombing. Now, you also ask the question how uh, a plane will carry out such, uh, or the perpetrators will use the plane and uh, the security authorities are unable to detect or stave it off even before it happens. It's simple. You see, the security situation in the country is plagued by twin issues, inertia and complicity on the part of the authorities. And that is what is also responsible for the electoral violence that is going on in the country that is gradually assuming apocalyptic dimension. And so you have a government that is not really interested in the protection of lives and property in this country. And I can cite so many instances. Let us look at the Boko Haram, most of these so-called Boko Haram, uh, uh, characters that criminals that were released. They were, most of them, they said they were, they've been granted amnesty, they've, or pardon, or amnesty, whatever, nomenclature. 
Most of them were detained. And after that, they say they have been rehabilitated and we are released into back into the public. And they run into thousands, thousands of them. Erufa himself said he once tried that strategy, but so they realized that these were repeatedly. No matter how you try to rehabilitate them, they will revert to crime. And even the money is given to them is to enable them to carry out their criminal activities. And so he stopped it. But the federal government is still going on, especially the government of Bono State and so on. So that is the level of complicity we are talking about. How does this serve as a deterrent? Rather than uh, penalize these characters, rather than uh, uh, imprison them, tie them and imprison them, the federal government is treating these issues with kid gloves. And that is why people are talking of ethnicity, they are talking of nepotism, because the belief is that the these characters are uh, from the north. And so the president is trying as much as he can. That is the truth, and that is the conviction of most Nigerians. So when you have such situations, how do you expect the federal government to react? And if you remember, even the uh, Minister for Defense came on air, shamelessly said Nigerians should defend themselves. How will Nigerians defend themselves when you don't have the kind of weaponry, you don't have the kind of ammunition that these criminals carry. If the army cannot defend the country, if the police cannot defend the country, that are licensed to carry this thing. A rich of area who does not have the license to carry a gun and who does not have a gun that will defend himself, that is completely ridiculous and rationally inexplicable. But that is the situation we find ourselves in right now. And it is so pathetic. So pathetic. So that is just a big reference to the Please question you are. Okay, let me come to Dr. Law. Dr. Dr. Mefo, let me, let me come to you. You're live. Um, you are a forensic expert. You're a social psychologist. But then, of course, we all live in the space called Nigeria. Just like Obunabo said, it looks like we have um, grown thick skin to, um, you know, the reports that come up about violence or killings. And it somewhat feel, feels like we no longer value life of the average Nigerians and, and that's why when we see these reports they're just numbers to us or, or just you know a regular happening but my, I'm still stuck on the fact that they're telling us that in Nasarawa it was a drone that dropped a bomb and of course in, um, in Niger state an unknown aircraft actually um, bombed and, sh uh, and, and injured people in a particular community, especially, it did not just target, target anybody, targeted vigilante members, people who were supposedly protecting um, the lives and property of people in those areas, being that it means that there is some form of lacuna. Um, security agencies have not been able to protect the people, so the people have taken it upon themselves to protect themselves. How could this even happen for a country that has intel? How would an unknown aircraft be flying in the Nigerian airspace and it was not shut down, so much so that it got to Niger State to kill vigilante members? Well, the situation is very pathetic and uh, worrisome. As a matter of fact, Nigerians ought to be more worried than ever before. What has happened is um, unbelievable, but I must tell you this wasn't the first time that such a thing should be happening. I recall there was a time we were reliably informed that a strange aircraft like that was a drop in a some supplies somewhere in Enugu, supplies to some uh, known, unknown name uh, or rather uh, non-state actors. And the authorities never, you know, responded uh, to give explanation as uh, regards, uh, you know, what actually happened. So I am not surprised that uh, this uh, is happening in uh, Niger. My only worry is that uh, we are less than one month away to the general uh, elections, especially the presidential election that will uh, usher in um, a new uh, government President Muhammad Buhari is their successor. Um, I, 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 I suspect that uh, even this uh, group doing this is not really checkmated. Now, they may, they, they may truncate the election. You know, I say this because even, you know, acquiring an aircraft is not 
uh, and his state and um, And if they are domiciled here in Nigeria, where are they? Where are they based? Where is the airstrip they are using? Where, where is the aircraft? You know, where, where is he really domiciled in Nigeria? Does he fly in? If he flies in without clearance into Nigeria airspace, what is happening to our uh, systems? How did such foreign aircraft gain entrance into Nigeria without being detected and without having challenged? It shows that there is much more going on than the eyes. And um, I, I totally align with my brother there that is um, identifying two uh, key factors responsible for the growing insecurity in the country, especially official collusion. You see, I have often said that there is a problem when it comes to what you call um, terrorism. One man's a terrorist is another person's a freedom fighter. And then I recall that when a President um, a Bele, good Lord Jonathan, was around, you know, President as he then was, you know, he said that uh, he had Boko Haram even in his government. He was referring to the asymmetric um, nature of um, um, the counter-terrorism and um, the terrorism is going on in the country at that time. And, and, and there is the same thing going on now of collusion. Nobody can tell me that um, a whole aircraft will uh, enter Nigeria and nobody you know, sees it and nobody challenges it. And do you remember that there was a time it was uh, said that, um, um, the, that uh, uh, Zanfara State was declared a no-fly zone? Mm -hmm. I'm not aware that Zanfara State has an aircraft, uh, has, 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 has uh, an airport. So why was it declared uh, you know, a no-fly zone? It meant that aircraft enter Zafara and leave. And then you, you need to understand the kind of things going on in the country. You know, pure criminal uh, enterprise going on. And um, that was Zafara, as an example, had to do with uh, you know, uh, gold, uh, mi gold uh, mining and uh, yeah. other, other, other minerals. And the uh, terrorism going on in the country is also related to some of these things. If you go to a place like Borono State, you know, Zambiza Forest and so on and so forth, you'll be surprised that the mining activities, you know, are going on in those places. So you discover that there is a kind of, you know, the, 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 you know what you may call a, uh, a, a ungoverned space in the country that is really growing. Non-state actors, you know, pe pen, you know, penetrating the country and gaining grounds. And then uh, if they are allowed to uh, torpedo the, convulse the system to the point that we are not able to hold a conclusive presidential election uh, in February 2025. Uh, uh, you know, it's going to be a big problem. And uh, one, the reason I say this is because I have looked at the constitutional provisions, the two conditions for the production of Nigeria representatives. You need to hold the um, election effectively in a minimum of 24 states of the federation. And uh, if you take the number of states in the country that are challenged, you will discover that we are really facing a very clear present danger. Look at the entirety of uh, the Southeast Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Southeast is up to today, even today, you know, the, the, the police personnel and the, some others were killed today. Mm -hmm. And it has been a daily occurrence in the Southeast. Mm -hmm. So you can see that. The, the issue of uh, insecurity is escalating, and even the dimension, you know, the dimension is becoming more fried, more fried, because if you can now, uh, if, if uh, the non-state actors can now deploy aircraft, it means that they are not relying only on ground forces now, they are also uh, deploying uh, air, air power, and uh, that is a major problem, and then uh, Till now, we haven't had anything from the authorities because I had expected that yeah. uh, by now the chief of air, air, or air, air staff should be talking. Would we'll be speaking the on this matter. The defense staff should be talking. Even the even the president ought to have uh, summoned uh, an emergency security mm. meeting. If uh, they are uh, as alarmed as we are, but they were not seen. You know, the, the, such a uh, alarm e being exact, raised. Exactly, you know, Mr. In official quarters. So you know, the that's, a, that's wonder, actually what my next is question. Going on. Yes, that's actually my next question. I'm going to toss it to yes. Obunabo. Obunabo, just there's been some calculated silence on this matter, apart from the fact that one happened 
just at the border of Benue State, and Benue State has a governor that seems to never let these things slide. But then the one that happened in Niger, which for me, I think that that is a serious matter where our, somebody really went under the radar in our own airspace. I mean, let's talk about the drone, because we have a video of the police public relations officer uh, in Nasarawa State. So he gave an explanation of sorts saying, um, in fact, that the, the, the explosion was not done by the Air Force. It was done by a drone, um, you know, that it, the drone dropped a bomb. And you and I know, uh, Open Abo, that you can't just fly drones anyhow in this country. But let's take a listen to what the police public relations officer had to say. Waiting by the water side, waiting for the vehicle that conveyed the cows uh, to come and discharge the cows for them. And uh, uh, well, they, all of a sudden they had an explosion, uh, like bomb, and uh, the result of which so many lives were consumed, including the animals. So, based on that, I uh, decided that it's important for us to visit the scene and then uh, see and take proactive measure so that it will not get escalated, and that's what we did yesterday. Uh, we have already put uh, measures in place. We fortified the area with uh, more policemen, especially mobile patrolmen, and um, uh, we are also in contact with the, uh, the Sarikis of Fulani, the Hardos, those are their officials. And then uh, the Mumba men have been stationed uh, all around that area, Doma, uh, Ike and uh, Rukubi, uh, so that uh, we don't uh, expect any reprisal. To the best of my knowledge, here, as at yesterday, 27 people were buried. Uh, an information letter came to us that one person among those who are injured at the Mithen Hospital also died here in life here. But that's for now, is the number we have. Um, open up, so he's telling us what we already know, and then he's saying that casually that 27 people were killed, uh, that they've deployed policemen to fortify the area. But that those are people on the ground. Where is the NIA? Where's the NSA? Where's the, where's the Nigerian Air Force? Because it's our airspace that these guys are using to kill our people, 27 dead already. We don't know if that's enough. Um, there might be more people that have not been accounted for. Um, why is there some form of silence, especially for the one that happened in Niger State? And, and just like Dr. Merfor well, said... Um, uh, um, uh, Marianne, you see, the truth is, uh, Nigerians are sick and tired of the high blood pressure of the certain rhetoric and an end of conflict performance. You can see the uh, lackadaisical attitude of the CRO, police force CRO. And I believe that you understand what proactive measures uh, uh, mean because he said uh, they are taking proactive measures when they are actually reacting to what has happened. If they have taken proactive measures, of course, they would have prevented it from happening. Like you rightly asked, you know, how come these people invaded the airspace without the uh, NIA, without the aviation uh, authorities or anybody knowing? It is definitely not possible. And that is why it's talk of complicity here. Now, if you talk of intelligence, if you remember when the prison was invaded, I think this Kuja prison also was invaded. The federal government, in fact, Mr. President came on air to say that he blamed it on intelligence. And immediately the House of Press reacted, responded by saying, you know, you have 44 at your disposal and nothing was done. Then let us also look at the service speech, the former service speech, I'm talking of the Buratai and Co. What happened? So much was allocated for the purchase of arms and ammunition and all the security gadgets in order to stave off security. What happened? When their successors came on board, they cried out to say there was nothing on ground to justify the, uh, for the money that the, their predecessors collected. They were rewarded with ambassadorial appointment. Then you also look at a former Inspector General of Police that was ordered by Mr. President to relocate to Bruno State. Mr. President got to Bruno State a few months after, only to be told that the man never slept in Bruno State. What did Mr. President do? 
If Jason does, I will investigate when I get back to Abuja. The man retired. I don't want to say retired honorably because, uh, I, I mean, he does the religion of duty. But the man retired. So when you don't have the talent, rather you reward the netitude with all kinds of promotions and so on, of course, there will definitely be this case of inertia. Lethargy. Even on the part of the lower one. First and foremost, how are you taking care of the, the, the soldier? Look at Edo State. When the crime, there was spike in crime, especially in kidnapping, abductions, and so on, the Edo State government had to go to Abuja. I don't know whatever he did. At the end of the day, a DC, a deputy commissioner of police was involved, an operative of the theaters was involved. And that is why I talk of complicity. And that is why I also inertia on the part of the junior officers who believe that if they die, they die for nothing. And again, look at the captain. If you remember the captain that was also arrested, what happened? That matter has been swept under the captain. Mm. He was arrested, even the cop, the criminal that was arrested, indicted him. It has been swept under the captain, nothing has been heard. And these things discourage the soldiers. And so most of them, when they are there, what they want to do is just to make their money and get away. Because if they are superiors, they are making billions. Because this thing is now a great victory. If the security man, if they are superior, they are making billions. Why should they not kill themselves for nothing? And then for a country that will not even reward you, will not even appreciate your effort. Mm. That is what is going on. Mm. And that is why, that is the bane of such. Look at how the PRO is discussed. In fact, because you are a national TV, I would have said something. Mm. I am not comfortable with that PRO. Because it's as if we are talking of lives. We are talking of security of the nation. And look at the casual manner with which he's just explaining the issue. Without any death at all. Not death. He didn't make any sense at all. Mm. And that is why the country is where we are today. And that's why I said it is hinged on uh, inertia and complicity. Don't Both the federal government, the, the federal government, including Mr. President, but he's the C in C. But he seems to be aloof from issues going on. He's in a hurry to leave. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. I'm tempted to ask this question. I want the vice president to take over. Open up, I'm, I'm, open up, I'm really tempted to ask the question. How are you sure that the president is aware of what happened in Niger State? If the president is not aware, he's grossly incompetent. You have your NSA, you have your staffing team, you have all the security agencies. They report to you on daily basis, especially your NSA. So if the president says ignorance of what is going on, then he's grossly incompetent. God is the CC. The most stuff at his table. He's not just the president of the country. He's the president and commander in chief. But let me tell you this. A lot of these services don't even have regard for Mr. President, I must tell you this. Because how can you instruct other an ID to relate to Bono and they now applaud your other? In the military is a very serious offense. Okay. It's a thing to mutiny. But what happened? Nothing. So they don't have regard for this president at all, and that is because of the tax. Okay. The government is not controlled by one man anymore in this country. It is controlled by a cartel. And the cartel is making a lot of money from all this uh, crisis. And that is why it will continue. Hmm. That is why it will continue. Okay. Dr. Dr. Mefo, let, let, me, let me come back to you. Many pundits, security pundits, have said that Previous attacks uh, that had a nature of the, the nature that looked like the ones that we've seen in Niger and Nasara State were attempts to check and see how watertight our security was. And, and, and if it's anything to go by, if these people somewhat have seen that our security or our defenses, um, you know, or that we're weak in terms of our defense. Where, did that, where does that leave us as a country going forward, especially as we're, the, you know, just a few days away from our elections, and this is very important, um, you know, for the future of this country. Where does that leave us as a country? If these so-called terrorists, whether they be, um, you know, within or without, where does that leave us? You know, I made one statement. I said that um, one uh, man's uh, terrorist is another man's uh, freedom fighter. Hmm. I have uh, had uh, some people describe uh, Boko Haram as a freedom fighter. And um, that sent uh, a, a serious signal to me. It, it, it was a red flag. In other words, some people who are in a position to checkmate 
terrorism and insurgency in the country are not really doing the work. And they are not doing the work because they have a reason. The reason is because they are not seeing these people as terrorists. This is one level of the problem. Another aspect of the problem that I need to avert our attention to is this. There was a statement made once by uh, the governor of the uh, Borji State, um, Alaji Balamo, and uh, he made that statement on the national television. He said that, um, they, that they were running a project of uh, resettling the nomadic Kefulanis in Nigeria. You know, that statement is very fundamental because some of the people that are coming into the country, they are not, uh, they, they, they are not uh, normal people. These are warriors. These are fighters. These are terrorists. And um, these are on arrival policies and all those things. And of course, the ECOWAS the protocol that has opened the, the borders of all the countries to uh, one another. These are problems. Yeah. So you discover that Nigeria, Nigeria is facing a very peculiar problem. Very, very peculiar. Because some of the people who should be up in arms fighting on behalf of the country to stop the advancement of uh, these uh, terrorists are not doing the work. Erufai, the governor of uh, Kaduna State, at a point was paying these uh, people. You know, he said he was trying to negotiate peace. The more you pay them, is the more they, they, they get a more sophisticated arms and um, they bring in more of their people stranded all over Africa, bring them into the country and have them uh, uh, resettled. In fact, before Obadiah, Melavia died, he made another statement. You see, we need to put all these things together to be able to make sense out of what is going on. He said that his com you know, communities in southern Kaduna are being displaced, wiped out, and replaced by their aggressors. Who are the traditional Oh, Dr. Mefo, we're having connection you know, issues with you. They killed, sacked, and the people that sacked them are allowed to take over, are allowed to take over their, their places. And at a point, we found, we, it was reported that as many as 112 communities had been sacked in Southern Cardinal Road. Hmm. By who? That's the question. You know, it's the same people. These people... Officially, we have been told that they are not even Nigerians. And again, we hear from very placed, top placed Nigerians like Governor, uh, Governor Obauji that said that there is a project to resettle some people in Nigeria. How are we sure that the people doing this are not the same people that have, that have been resettled by such uh, processes? This is one aspect we need to pay attention to. The fourth dimension, which I think is equally important, <laughs> is that if you look at uh, if you look at um, the, um, the you know the original Fulanis, the Fulanis who have always known, you know they um, they, they are being infiltrated by their by their kids and kids coming from the uh, all over Africa. And if you look at it, you know my problem I don't have any problem with the uh, Fulanis you know, settling in Nigeria and all that. But we need to be sure that these are not a warriors. We need to be sure that these people are not a terrorist. Okay. Because if you check, if you look at what is happening in, uh, in the Maghreb, you know, in the Maghreb, in Mali, all over the place, and of course, what happened in a Central African Republic, where the, where the, uh, 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 the Fulani concentration there was a disaster. And they, they haven't found settlement anywhere. And I believe that all these people are mingling with the fighters to find Dr. their way. Dr. Into Dr. Mefo, the we have to go. On. I have seen and read many. Okay, just, just this last line. Okay. I'm sure that we are aware that some people believe that this country belongs to them and they decide what will happen because they believe that the country be belongs to them. They can say to whoever they want in Nigeria and they make in at least the services of these fighters to enable them to achieve such purpose. This is what I see to be going on. And I'm not saying it is oh. it's a fact, but I need to put it 
there are so many questions that need answers. And I'm sorry, Dr. Mefo, it's very difficult for us to hear you because we're having connection distortions with you. But thank you so much. Mefo, uh, Law Mefo is a forensic and social psychologist. Unfortunately, we had a little problem with his connection. And also, Punaboin Kotaya is a civil rights advocate. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I think so many questions that beg for answers. I'm guessing that we will have this conversation again and again until we can get answers. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. We'll take a quick break. Thank when we return on virtual education tonight, we'll be discussing the electorate and INEX preparedness ahead of the 2023 election. Stay with us.